All right, so we, we were talking, we, we ended up talking about price and quantity indices last time, right? So we, well, I think where we, we had just started on it, we had said, look, I have sort of expenditure growth, Xi T plus 1, Pi T plus 1, divided by the sum of Xi T, Pi T. So we're, we're going to look at the growth in expenditure over time. And again, this could be aggregate expenditure. This could be expenditure on a given category of goods. And we said, well, one way you could decompose that would be the sum of the XIT PI T plus 1 divided by the sum of the XIT PIT. So that would be a period T-based price index because it's looking at the same bundle top and bottom. And we could then use also a quantity index. And the corresponding quantity index, PI T plus 1, divided by the sum of XI T, PI T plus 1. So you can see this works because I just inserted the same term here and here, so it cancels. And so you would call this like PT plus 1 over PT. And this could be thought of as QT plus 1 over QT, right? So that, that would be one way to decompose the growth in price and quantities into a price index here and a quantity index here. We said, well, what, what, what about this makes sense? Because, you know, I could have put my hat size here, right? And my hat size here, and this would also be a decomposition, right? Everybody realizes that, right? The fact that I put something here and put something here would decompose this, wouldn't make any sense, wouldn't be very at all helpful in thinking about the world, but it would work. So you can't just say, well, it's a decomposition and therefore it makes sense. You got to say, well, why does it make sense? Well, the answer is, well, this is a good thing to look at because this is a first order approximation to the cost function, right? That is, this is essentially saying how much did the cost go up along the tangent line, right? When we talked about the cost function, we held the bundle fixed and that gave us the tangent line to the cost function. That's exactly what this is, right? This is just a tangent line. So we know that that tangent line is, people often say, well, it measure, it, 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 so I have this concave cost function and I'm looking along the tangent line and you'll say, well, that, in, that overstates the increase in the cost of living. People often misinterpret that and say that it overstates the change in the cost of living. That's not true. It's biased in a particular direction, right? So when the cost of living is going down and I'm moving this way, it's actually understating the decline, right? The decline is bigger. It's, that is, it's always making it more like it look like it went up. So when the cost of living went up, I really am moving along this curve. My approximation is moving along this line. So I'm overstating the increase. When the cost of living is going down, I'm actually understating the decrease. Right? Everybody understands? So it's not like it's always too big in absolute value. It's always too big in numeric value. It's always going that way. It's, because of the cost, cost function is concave, I'm ignoring this guy's ability to adjust. I'm saying, look, even if he, if he didn't make any changes to his consumption bundle, that's how much cost would rise. If he makes any changes, it's got to make cost of living, in the new case, be somewhat less than what I just laid out. OK? Everybody understand that? All right, so that's, the, that's this quantity, that's this price index, OK? All right? Now this here is a quantity index. And that quantity index you can think of as basically approximating the guy's indifference curve by the budget line, right? That's what we're doing. We're approximating his indifference curve by the budget line. We're saying, look, I know one thing from theory, which is he's tangent to the budget line. And it doesn't matter if it's two, two dimensions, three dimensions, thousand dimensions. It doesn't matter. He's always going to have that place. He's going to be at that point where he's tangent. And because he's tangent, 
then changes in his utility can be approximated by how you would move along the budget line. Right? So that is approximating the first order approximation to the utility function. Now you might say, well, geez, if it's a first order approximation to utility, how, what units is it in? It's in dollar units, right? It's the income equivalent required to ch give you that change in margin utility. I mean, that change in utility, right? We've kind of, if you go through the formula, there's a lamb, one over lambda term that's actually causing that to be in dollars, okay? Any questions that people have? All right? Any, any questions before we go forward? Now, there's nothing magical about this particular decomposition, we equally well could have decomposed it the reverse way. We could have made this sum of x i t plus 1 p i t plus 1 divided by x i t plus 1 p i t. So that would have been decomposing it using a price index based in t plus 1. But if I did that, then what I would need in order to make it add up again would be this same term here. So I would have ended up with a quantity index that's based in period t. Okay? So here, price index based in T, quantity index based in T plus 1. Here, this is T plus 1 base, and here it's T. And there's not, none of them, one of these, it's not like one of these is good and one of them is bad. They're just different, right? They're two alternatives. They're both approximations. In this picture, it sort of corresponds if I go from here to here, I could approximate either along this line or I could approximate on that line. That is, I could take where I ended up and approximate along that line, or I could take where I started and approximate along that line. All right, and because it's concave, you can kind of see that in this example, if you're holding cost constant, <coughs> I'm going to be somewhere between those two. One's too big, one's too small. That's the usual way of looking at it. In terms of the discussion people have of price indices, if this is really the starting year and the ending year, we usually call this a Lesper's price index, and this is often called the Posh price index. They're just two corresponding differences. In a comparative statics exercise where you go from point A to point B or B to A, doesn't know which way you're going, you know, it just matters am I using one point or the other. That's really it. 